week, I should be using my discard to make either focaccia or naan. It can go in the freezer after it's um, cooked and be ready because we both love naan. But it's just uh, unfed discard, some milk, yogurt, salt, flour, and baking powder, and then a little bit of melted butter at the end, cooked in cast iron skillet. So I'm going to mix it up and let it rise for a while. I don't know if this is a King Arthur flour recipe, but I'll tell you the ingredients. It's a cup of unfed sourdough discarder, d discard, a half a cup of warm milk, quarter cup of plain Greek yogurt, two cups of all-purpose flour, one teaspoon of baking powder, and a pinch of kosher salt. And then we'll use five tablespoons of melted butter later on. But this, now that it's mixed together to a shaggy dough, needs to sit covered for two to three hours, uh, maybe longer depending on the temperature of your kitchen, before it is ready to be kneaded, divided into eight pieces, and cooked on a cast iron pan, in a cast iron pan. Now that I've finished my full-size sampler afghan, I had a little project I wanted to be to do in between the next afghan I start, and this is called the meadow cowl. It's a little fur-lined, fur-edged neck cowl, like you could wear it with a shirt in place of a, so it'd sort of be like a tank or a turtleneck, or just as a neck warmer. But I thought it it crocheted up beautifully, and I'm using some hand-dyed merino wool from Montana Crochet. She is in the next state over. My non has sat for long enough. I had it go extra long while I worked on my crochet project. I've got a smoking hot cast iron pan and both sides are brushed with butter until we get these all cooked. That didn't take long. I've got eight naan. I, my son and I both love bread. Uh, betcha we only end up with maybe four to put in the freezer, but That'll be nice to have. I need to do this every time I have sourdough discard every week. Do this or focaccia. But they turn out really nice. For tonight's dinner, we're going to do pork chops in the air fryer. I think I've showed you my new air fryer. Same brand as my new dehydrator. Love it. I also, since my cast iron pan has still got some butter in it from the naan bread, I'm going to do this garden-grown acorn squash that was given to me. And I also have some hand ground grits. The bottom layer is from my Azure Standard dried corn, but the top layer, the red stuff uh, in the mix, is from my own garden grown Mandan bride corn. And this is from when I created the polenta and hand ground a bunch of corn for polenta and cornmeal. And then the coarse stuff is the grits. So I'm going to make southern grits to go with our pork chops and the acorn squash. I'm following a recipe I found online. It's four cups water and one and a half cups of grits boiled and then set aside for a while to soak and then boil it again. Uh, there's a little bit of salt in there too and then I'll add butter, parmesan, and heavy cream at the end once it's cooked for I think it's about a half an hour. But the first thing I want to do is get my grits boiling in some salted water to begin with to get them softened up. I'm excited too because this, that looks like I might be able to use a whole jar, which is good because grits don't, especially fresh hand ground ones, do not last all that long in the pantry. And I really probably should have had these in the freezer, but we will get these used up for dinner tonight. As soon as the grits start boiling, I'm going to turn them off and let them sit for probably a half an hour just to soak. And I've got my acorn squash, salted, peppered, buttered, and a little bit of Doobie Family Maple syrup put in there, ready to go in my 400 degree oven for, oh, 45 minutes or so. Pork chops are done. I'm going to have a green salad. The squash, I will be the only one to eat that. And then here's the grits. I've stirred in the butter, the parmesan, and the cream. And I think that's going to be super good. Perfect Saturday dinner is going to be a 
chuck roast with the remainder of a jar of pickled pepperoncini that I had in the fridge. They're delicious, and I've got more downstairs that I'll be getting out to serve with. Pumpkin is hollering. Um, but I wanted the juice and the remaining peppers, the peppercorns, and the garlic clove that was in the can in the jar to go in with this roast and that's that's all I'm adding. I'm just going to salt and pepper the top um, with a little bit of Redmond's real salt and some pepper and then we'll crock pot this all day long, serve it on hoagies oh. with some sliced cheese. Uh, I usually do provolone but I don't have provolone but first I will shred the meat once it's all cooked so this is going to be an excellent dinner plus it'll be good for lunch tomorrow. So I tried to make my sous vide egg bites for the week to take to work for breakfast by not sous videing them and microwaving them instead. Uh, it works in a pinch but it's not the best. Sous vide is definitely better. Microwaving them to cook them and then having to microwave them again to heat them at work um, they're, they get maybe it's because I use milk too, but they got a little watery and they're a little bit tougher, not as light and fluffy. So, sous vide, if you have the time, is definitely worth it. We were so hungry, I forgot to show you the beef before we dug in. Uh, I sh got it out of the crock pot and shredded it, put it back into the juice. I took the peppercorns out because I don't like biting into peppercorns and <clears throat> served it on hoagies with a new jar of the pickled pepperoncini from the pantry and a little bit of cheese and a salad to go with. This is exciting. I got a new ice fishing rod. Um, I have my homemade one. It's the same brand as my other retractable fishing rod that I actually really love that I use in the summertime. So I trusted them and I'll include a link in the description box below for uh, this ice fishing rod and I could include the other rod too. What came with it, I ordered this separately. This was a recommended line and I wasn't sure that any line came with the rod in real in little tackle box combo so I I got this so I may use this as opposed to what they sent with it but what came in the rod and reel kit with the little um, tackle box as well was the two-piece rod that I need to put together the reel it came with a spool of 150 yards of ice fishing line specifically it came with this little tiny tackle box for ice fishing and I looked at others but I decided that this was enough for now. It comes with some jig heads, various types of jig heads. I think there's 10 in there and then some little like little um, mealworm lures to thread onto those jigs. It's a nice little kit. So let's put this rod and reel together. And I just need to put the two pieces together and I'm lining up the eyes that the fishing line threads through. If I need to adjust that later I can, but I just want to get that firmly seated in there. Now I need to put the reel on. You slip this end in first into this slot right here, and then I just need to tighten up this bottom nut to secure the reel onto the rod. And then this, the other nice thing about this reel is that the handle flips in so it's a little more compact. It's got nice action. I just need to put some line on it and I'll be ready to go ice fishing again. And we are getting some snow next week. I think my son saw on his weather app that it could be up to 16 inches. So with that comes some cold weather as well and that should extend our ice fishing season for a little while longer. It's mid-February right now so we still have plenty of winter left. But then again, some years we have a pretty warm spring and then get hit later. This is called the false spring for us. Feels like spring but uh, be on guard because it's not going to stay feeling like spring for long but the longer we have cold weather the more we can ice fish. I'm going to go ahead and spool up with this trilene micro ice. Uh, I've threaded it through through the eyes back down to the reel 
knotted it on the reel. Now I just need to flip the bale again. Okay, just a little bit of light tension up higher. I tied a little jig head to the end of my line. We could put a little one of these grubs on here. He's kind of slippery. Come here, buddy. Even though he's fake. Put a little grub on. I did that to keep the line from getting sucked back and being loose. So I'm just going to reel that in a little bit to be able to hook it onto one of the eyes of the pole. And that'll keep it, if I can get it untangled. Come on, man. There we go. Then it will transport a little better. I don't want to put a bunch of tension on it and have it bent all the time, but that it makes it easy to transport and baits on it, ready to go. And I've got my a little bit left of this trilene ice fishing line. And then I've got the line that came with the pole rod and reel set. And I'll take the extra tackle with me. So today is sourdough bread baking day. This is sourdough non-bread, a double batch that I had some yogurt and milk left over to use. So that is rising. I also have sourdough crackers to use up some of my King Arthur flour whole wheat flour that is expiring and then I will just use my home ground whole wheat flour but those crackers are really good I've added some herbs I added oregano thyme and rosemary out of my garden and the bread is going to be made as well plus I have bought uh it was Oh, maybe a month ago they had 15 pound bags of potatoes for dirt cheap. So I bought it and I'm finally just now getting around to dehydrating with my new dehydrator, uh, which I featured in a couple of vlogs back. My new dehydrator, the 10 tray that is not the expensive Excalibur one, but a different brand. And I'll include the link for that in my description box. But the first thing, I'm, I've got a big pot of salted water coming to a boil so that I can blanch these and I'm creating enough thin slices using my mandolin which makes it really fast. I've peeled how many potatoes? I have five or six potatoes peeled so far. I know that approximately two potatoes fills one of these big trays after it's been sliced and I want to fill all ten of them so that's going to take 18 to 20 potatoes I imagine. Um, and I might just keep slicing and make a scallop potato, cheesy scallop potato dish for dinner tonight. But this is what I'm doing while I wait for all of my sourdough things to be ready to be baked. And uh, this will dehydrate for 5 to 10 hours at, I believe it was 130 to 140 degrees. Then these can be stored in mylar bags indefinitely as long as I put in some oxygen absorbers. Then I won't have to peel and slice potatoes for different dishes. And I may tomorrow do a 10 tray batch, if, depending on how many potatoes I have left, of shredded potatoes for hash browns. I buy those from Sam's in a great big carton and they are so easy to make hash browns, especially like when you're camping. But even at home, you just pour boiling water over them let them sit for 12 minutes, and then fry them up as hash browns are super good. So there's no reason I can't do that at home and save a ton of money. I got my last potatoes enough sliced for all 10 trays. This batch still has to go into the blanching process. There's a batch in there. No, I need to put that in the blanching water. I've got these cooling and draining before they go on the second to last tray. And these are the other trays to take down and start dehydrating. I sliced and blanched, the blanching was probably unnecessary, but I sliced and blanched a couple of extra, maybe three or four extra potatoes to create a small dish of scallop potatoes. So I'm going to layer those sliced potatoes, sliced shallots from the garden, sliced garlic that I've minced from the garden, 
celery salt that I made from the garden with some sea salt, pepper, shredded cheddar cheese, some flour, and some milk. And I'll just keep layering those things and then it will get baked in the oven for um, probably 350, maybe 375 for about an hour until it's tender and done. I've got it all layered up with potatoes, shallots, garlic, celery salt, pepper, flour, and cheddar cheese. Now just need to pour some additional milk. It's probably about four layers just like this. That will thicken up as it bakes, but I am going to put this in the fridge until dinner time tonight before I bake it and it'll be fine sitting just like that. You could also add ham, bacon, or sausage, or even ground beef that you've cooked to this dish. I'm keeping it uh, meat free this time. I did not have any in the fridge that needed to be used up, but it'll be good one way or the other. All 10 trays of blanched sliced potatoes are in the dehydrator. We're going to run this at 140 degrees for five hours. The next thing I need to do is get my sourdough crackers, my whole wheat sourdough crackers, in the oven. First I need to brush them with some olive oil, sprinkle with some sea salt, and then I'm going to use a pizza cutter to cut them into cracker sized pieces. Spread olive oil over the crackers, salted, and then cut them into cracker bites. These will bake at 350 for 20 to 25 minutes until they're cooked through and crisp and lightly browned. The sourdough non bread dough is proofing nicely. It can wait for a while longer. I'm kind of needing a break from all of these tasks, so there's nothing hurting it from sitting there until I'm ready, because as soon as I need this for a little bit, it will need to be cooked in cast iron with butter brushed over it. And except for getting the potatoes out of the dehydrator, much later today, all I have left is the sourdough bread. And that's the end of today. Lots of time in the kitchen, lots of sourdough things made, but the bread always turns out gorgeous. So good. I let the potato slices go for about seven hours in my dehydrator and I ended up getting a huge Weck tulip jar full of them for downstairs that I'll keep in the root cellar and then a quart dried to keep upstairs. I put a an oxygen absorber in the big jar that'll go downstairs and I've got little oxygen absorbers that I'll put in a couple in this one that'll stay upstairs but uh, that's about 10 pounds of potatoes preserved instead of letting them grow eyes and tossing them out when I can't get to them in the pantry. And more DIY. I swear, old houses take so much work. But this will be an easy project. Well, I got the toilet fill valve replaced, no problem. But then my water fill, my, my fill line attached to the wall was leaking. So I went back to the hardware store, got a new fill line, and that one leaks too. So temporarily... I, I have three hours is enough, so I've got a little tiny bowl to catch the one drip every minute or so that comes out of that brand new fitting. I'll tackle it another day. I think I just can't get it tightened enough, or for some reason it's not seating. Anyway, the first problem is fixed. Now I have another one. You ever stand in front of the fridge looking for a sweet snack? Well, I was downstairs taking some Sam's things to the pantry and I remembered I had these awesome wild foraged, urban foraged pears that I canned in simple syrup with some of my homemade 
or actually did I use my homemade vanilla syrup? Anyway, there's vanilla bean in here. And then I also got out a jar of the uh, applesauce that I got apples from my girlfriend's grandmother's orchard. And I'm going to make some more blueberry, apple, honey, uh, might add some cherry juice, fruit roll up recipe to dehydrate. Mm. That's perfect. A light syrup, urban forage pears from the park, and a little bit of a vanilla flavor in there. So good. Hit the spot. Do you have a teenager in your house that doesn't clean up their room and throw out old bags of fast food or leaves dishes in his room? I have this little tip. Maybe some wild rice. I had to cut each one in half. Sprinkled around the food left in his room might give the idea that he's got visitors and needs to clean it up. We'll find out. I processed up the blueberry, apple, cherry, honey and lemon juice fruit roll-up mix. So now I need to put that on trays. And then we'll get on the cranberry apple cherry. And here's the beautiful bright colors of the cranberry blueberry applesauce cherry juice. I'm excited to give this a try. I'm going to spread it over my additional trays that I got for making fruit leathers. I'll include the link in the description box below. I forgot to spray the first tray, but I will be spraying the second tray and third. I think I'll probably get two more trays for the cranberry with some avocado spray just to try to keep it from sticking. I've got two of the blueberry apple cherry trays, the original big one and then another of my new fruit leather trays. And I've got three of the cranberry blueberry apple all the stuff I put in there. So let's get the trays loaded in. And I'm going to run it at 165 for five hours this time. It took the cranberry mix fruit roll ups are all dehydrated. So I'm rolling them up in between parchment paper and then tying kitchen twine around the roll in several places and then cutting them and then cutting them into little rolls that I've tied up put them in this big jar with some oxygen absorbers and that gives us fruit roll-ups for a couple of weeks. The blueberry, apple, cherry ones, the two trays are still in a dehydrator. Those were a little thicker and taking a little bit longer to dehydrate. And this is what I got from five trays of fruit leather dehydrating. Two huge jars packed full of fruit leather roll-ups. <laughs> Another blizzard. This is why I fill the wood box by the house. This is why I can food. Our high for today is supposed to be something like minus three without the wind chill. So let's make sure we get a fire going and get it warmed up in here just in case the furnace were to go bad or just to save us on gas. And I know somebody else who will be very happy to be warm and cozy. What a perfect snowed in day project. I'm working on another crochet project and this is a round or a mandala crochet afghan and I'm learning so much. This is my basically my third project. The first was the afghan I showed you 
previously and then I did that neck cowl and now I'm working on this and it's turning out beautifully. I hope you're able to find some time to relax on snow days or on your weekends just for yourself. Make sure that you do some self-care and do some hobbies. Take some time to relax and enjoy yourself. Thank you.